All right, guys, uh, this is once again on the road, part four of the run series. Um, I'm going to read it aloud and go over the questions. There are some people in the room with me right now who have already sat through this once, but they're going to stay and sit through it again. Um, anybody that has any questions afterwards that are watching this video, please, by all means, just email me or post your questions in the comments section on the Remediation for post and I will answer it just as soon as I can. All right, so when we left off after part three, um, Mac and Dennis had gone to the gas station. They encountered a zombie. They rescued a little boy named Jeremiah, who's about six or seven years old. And they heard a girl named Anna on the radio, and they went to rescue her. And uh, in the process of rescuing her, she got cut or bitten by one of the plagued people and they've rescued her but she has a pretty bad place on her leg on the road the run series number four that doesn't look good mac and dennis glanced at each other then over their shoulders at the girl she was huddled in the back of the truck. Her eyes were wide with horror as she stared down at the gash on her leg. Dennis forced his own gaze back to the road ahead of him. Sunnydale was shrieking quickly in the rearview mirror. For a second, the only noise was the truck's engine as the group sped across the abandoned countryside. Well, I guess we found Anna, said Mac. Now what? Let's find a safe spot like we planned, replied Dennis. Maybe we can set up camp in the woods around here. He gestured to the west, where a thick tree line rose up not far from the road. Whether the seclusion it offered was inviting or ominous, nobody could decide. Will Anna be okay? Jeremiah piped up, looking worried. He turned and mouthed, Are you all right? through the rear windshield. She gave a weak nod. I'm sure she'll be all okay, said Mac with confidence. He didn't want the boy, who was clearly scared, to panic. But Mac felt close to panic himself. Would Anna be okay? He looked at Dennis, whose furrowed brow suggested that he was having the same thoughts. Mac glanced back at Anna again. She was hugging her legs close to her chest, her forehead pressed against her knees. Mac saw that she was shaking. He couldn't tell if it was from the bumping of the truck on the uneven road or from crying. The wound on her legs stood out angrily against her pale skin. How do you think the plague spreads? asked Mac carefully. I mean, how does someone turn into a zombie? Dennis shuddered, then seemed to steal himself. It, it doesn't matter, he said firmly. We saved her, and we're going to help her. Her leg is a mess. He steered the truck gently off the road toward the tree line. He walked down, not wanting to jostle Anna in the back of the truck. Mac nodded. So we're a party of four now. Well, if I learned anything from my time on the farm, it's how to clean up a mess. He tried to force some cheer into his voice for his own sake as much as for his companions. Jeremiah, you didn't happen to take anything from the first aid aisle at the gas station, did you? Jeremiah rifled through the stash of items he had grabbed. The gas station now seemed like ages ago. Band-Aids! The boy held up a box of brightly colored Spider-Man bandages triumphantly. And hand sanitizer! He looked so hopeful that Mac had to suppress a laugh. Perfect, Mac replied. She'll feel better in no time. This seems like a good place to stop for now, said Dennis. Fortunately, the woods were sparse enough that he had managed to inch the truck through. They were stopped at a clearing. Dennis parked the truck and removed the keys from the ignition. 
He let out a breath that he didn't know he had been holding. I think we're safe for now. He opened the door, hopped out, and turned toward the back of the truck. You must be Anna. I'm Dennis, and they're Mac and Jeremiah, he indicated of his companions. We heard you on the radio. Are you okay? Anna stood up, still shaky, and clamored out from the back of the truck. You saved me. Her voice was ragged and breathless. I thought I was a goner. Thank you so much. Mac came around to the side of the truck and put a steadying hand on her shoulder. Don't mention it, he said, but we'd better take care of that cut. He led her to a rock where, he could, where she could sit while he attended her leg. This is going to sting, he told her apologetically, holding up the bottle of hand sanitizer. But that means it's working. Anna nodded bravely and bit her lip. She winced as the clear gel made contact with the wound, but she didn't complain. Do you? Her voice trailed off into a whisper. Do you think I'm going to become one of them? Mac didn't have to ask what she meant by them. With more confidence than he felt, he replied, No way! The worst you'll get is a cool scar and a heck of a story to go along with it. If anything, you'll end up with superpowers from the Spider-Man Band-Aids. Anna managed a small smile. As Mac finished dressing the wound, despite his joke, he was worried. Maybe it was his imagination, but the gash seemed to be intensifying in color. It had deepened into an unnatural shade of purple that almost glowed in the fading moon daylight. Anxiety gnawed at his stomach. He hastily covered the cut with the friendlier hues of the bandages. You're all set, he tried to grin. Now let's see how Dennis and Jeremiah are doing. Dennis and Jeremiah had set up camp as the sun set. They used old blankets and tarps from the truck to create improvised beds. The four companions looked at each other, unsure what to do next. If not for the frightening circumstances, it would have felt like a fun camping trip. Nobody had much of an appetite and all were exhausted. We can make plans in the morning, Dennis said. Right now, I'm too tired to think. The others agreed and tucked themselves in as well as they could. Falling up his jacket to use as a pillow, Mac decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. He could wait until tomorrow when he could get a moment alone with Dennis. He didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further. He closed his eyes. Images from the day's events swirled in his head, but eventually sleep overtook him. Hours later, Mac awoke to a strange rustling sound. It took him a moment to remember where he was and why. Then, recalling his anxiety from the previous night, he rolled over and looked toward Anna's pile of blankets. He gasped. Anna was gone. All right, guys, so we are going to go over the questions real quick. Make sure that you go back and reread as necessary to be able to answer these questions. So the first question is, what injury does Anna have? They talk a lot about it in this section. Make sure you go back and double check your answer if you're not sure which one of these is correct. Now, the climax of the story is the most exciting or intense point in the story. Now, this story is done in seven parts. So what is the climax of today's story? What is the most intense part of today's story? Over the course of the story, Anna's wound is getting worse. What evidence from the text supports this conclusion? So which one of these is the best evidence to support the fact that her wound is getting worse? 
question number four, Anna asked Mac if he thinks she's going to become one of them. Who does she mean by one of them? Again, check the story if you are not sure of the answer. What is the main idea of today's text? Pick which one of these is what this day's text, part four, is mostly about. That's what the main idea means. The main idea means what is it mostly about. Read these sentences from the text. Maybe it was his imagination, but the gash seemed to be intensifying in color. It had deepened into an unnatural shade of purple that almost glowed in the fading daylight. Based on these sentences, what might the word intensify mean? All right. All right, which is the best answer to complete the following sentence? Mac didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further. He decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. Now, what we're going to do is put each of these words in there and see which one makes the sentence make the most sense. Mac didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further, although he decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. Mac didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further while he decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. Mac didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further, but he decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. Or, Mac didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further, so he decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. Pick which one of those words is the best one to complete that sentence. All right, now we've got some constructive response. Think about today's lesson that I did for our regular lesson. Race format. Restate, answer, provide examples from the text, wrap it all up. So when Mac is taking care of Anna's wound, Anna asks if he thinks she is going to become one of them. What does Mac reply? So you're going to reword this as a statement. When Anna asks if Mac thinks she is going to become one of them, Mac replies, then you are going to go back to the passage and find where that is. So we're going to find out where Anna asked that question. Right here. She says, do you think I'm going to become one of them? And then it says, Mac didn't have to ask what she meant. With more confidence than he felt, he replied. So what you need to do is copy and paste his reply into your answer. So make sure that you reword the sentence and you write this in complete sentences. A lot of y'all are still just writing sentence fragments on these. If you write a sentence fragment, you will not get full credit. So make sure you answer fully. When Anna asks if Mac thinks she is going to become one of them, Mac replies and then put quotation marks and put what he replies. Describe how Mac feels as he's dressing Anna's wound. Support your answer with evidence from the text. So you will say, while he is dressing Anna's wound, Mac feels, then tell how he feels, and then say, according to the story, it says, give a quote, and that will, that will support your answer. All right, finally, question number 10. Read these sentences from the text. Mac decided not to voice his fears about Anna's cut. He would wait until tomorrow when he could get a moment alone with Dennis. He didn't want to scare Anna or Jeremiah further. So what is it that Mac fears about Anna's cut? What might Mac fear about Anna's cut? Support your answer oops, with evidence from the text. So you're going to say Mac fears that, put into the rest of the sentence what it is that he fears. And then say, I know this because in the story it says and then tell what the story says that supports your answer. All right, guys, 
do your best on this. If you have any questions about the assignment, you can type your questions into the comment section on this post right here. When you view the assignment, you can um, type your comments here and I, I will answer your comments when I get them or you can email me. But if you type them here, they get emailed to me and I can answer them very quickly. So that is the fastest way to ask me a question about the assignment. Remember, if you have not done remediation one, two, or three, you're going to want to do them in order. I will go and check the, the grades and grade these daily. I'm updating grades daily. I've got three students who have already brought their grades up to a passing grade. I've got one that has brought his grade up almost to a B. You, it is capable, you are capable of bringing your grade way up by doing all seven of these. So work hard and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.